Hey everyone, it's Max, and I am here to do a full trilogy review of The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. So, so the way this series goes is it's The Darkest Minds, Never Fade, and In the Afterlight, which is really fun because it creates a sentence, The Darkest Minds Never Fade in the Afterlight. So that's really cool. So, as per usual, my review is going to go through the order like this. It's gonna, I'm going to do a summary, then I'm going to talk about the plot, then I'm going to talk about the main characters, the writing, and then I give my rating. So for this whole trilogy I'm going to talk about how characters changed over time and just kind of the overall plot. So for a summary it is about a country, the United States, that kids died. Like everyone in a certain age group most kids died and the ones that didn't had these powers. Because of those powers, the adults were really scared of them and sent them into these camps. We follow our main character, Ruby, who has a more dangerous level of power, escaping from one of those camps and kind of trying to find her way to her grandmother's house. So Ruby's power is she can make people forget things. She can go into their minds and she can see their memories, she can change their memories, she can control them. Um, on the way, so she escapes with the help of a, an, a secret organization, but she ends up escaping them and on the way she meets some really great characters. Well, the thing that I like about this trilogy is that they defeat smaller bad guys. So each book there, Ruby and her friends are defeating someone different, which in the end leads up to the main bad guy, which as per usual is the government. So in the first two they are defeating smaller groups that are bad, which I really enjoy because a lot of dystopians don't do that. They have the one bad guy and the first two are just them figuring out what they're going to do, which I just find can be really boring. So I was really excited about this and it kept me on my toes. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is the characters. First I'm going to talk about Ruby. Ruby is a really great character. She's super sweet, she's super loyal, she only wants to do what she thinks is good for the group. You know, she will leave, she will do whatever she can to help people, which I really like. The biggest problem is in the third book. I find that this happens with a few dystopians, including the Divergent Trilogy, is she gets a hero complex which is the most annoying thing, I think, like, in the world because she just wants to save everyone and she doesn't listen. She doesn't talk to Liam and Chubbs and people. She talks to this one guy who I'm not a huge fan of. I'm pretty sure that's an unpopular opinion. His name is Cole. I do not like him. But it's just, she just wants to save everyone and she gets really annoying. There's a lot of miscommunication and I just hate that in characters. I think it ruins series. Thankfully, she gets a lot better. She changes, which, thank God, or else I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish it because that drives me crazy, and I just wanted someone to tell me that she gets better. So I'm going to tell you she does get better. So keep reading because it does get better. Next character I'm going to be talking about is Liam. Liam is kind of the leader of this little ragtag gang. It's just him, Chubbs, and Zoo. And he broke out a whole bunch of people from this prison camp, but they ended up getting split up, and so he's ju it's just the three of them. They find Ruby, and they decide to take her in. And he's just so sweet. He's so good-hearted. He just wants to help people. He just wants to find people's parents. And it's just, he's just a really sweet character. He's like the nicest kid in this um, series. And he just, he just wants, he just wants peace. He just wants to help people and be at peace. Next character I'm going to be talking about is Charles or Chubbs. He is Liam's best friend. He grows on you. At first he's pretty annoying because he doesn't trust Ruby, which is understandable. She shows up out of nowhere and they just take her on and he is a little bit more conservative. He wants to not take her on because he's worried that she's like a bad guy. But he does grow on you because he starts to like Ruby and they actually get a really great friendship and he's just like a super sweet guy. The next person I'm going to be talking about is Vita, who you don't meet until the second book. She also really grows on you. She's really 
slap happy. She wants to just, she's very angry, she acts on a whim, and she's very jealous of Ruby in the second book. Um, I can't go into too much detail on why, because it is a bit of a spoiler for the first book, but you, she definitely grows on you. She does become a lot sweeter when she starts to make friends with Ruby and Chubbs. The, na the last character I'm going to be talking about is Cole. Cole, I do not like Cole. He is, he just kind of, he just takes on the leadership position immediately in the third book. And I don't think, you know, he keeps talking about like peace and democracy, but he's just like, I'm the leader and that's, that's that. So, you know, he doesn't really give anyone a choice. He's all about like fighting, not trying to do it a peaceful way, like, and stop the bad guys a peaceful way. And he really puts a lot of things into Ruby's head that makes her have more of a hero complex and stops telling Liam things. And it's just, he's kind of the cause of all of that. And I, I don't really like him. Something happened in the last book that I'm, I'm kind of happy happened. If you read, if you've already read it, or if you're going to read it, you will understand what I say, what I'm saying. Um, but I just, I just don't like him as a character. And I'm actually going to talk about another character, and that is Clancy Gray. He does make quite an appearance in the first book and onwards. He is kind of He's a smaller villain. He um, he's very similar to Ruby, and they work together. He trains her, but it turns out he's not that great of a guy. And you do feel bad for him in a way, at least I do. But he is just kind of like a really bad person. I'm not going to go into too much more detail, or else that will be a bit of a spoiler. But um, not the greatest character. But I think he was written really well. Next thing we're going to be talking about is the writing. The writing was really great. It was fast. It was descriptive. It read like you were watching it, like it was a movie. Not in the same sense as I talked about with Shatter Me, where it didn't have enough detail, but I just thought that, like, I, you just read through them so fast. They're not small books. This is, I think, this is almost, this is 535 pages. I read it in two days. It is so fast. You love these. You just like zoom through them, which I really enjoy. Especially now I'm like recovering from a reading slump that I was in from like July until December of last year. And I just need books that I can just like zoom through. I need those types of books that I can just read, read, get them done with really fast because that's what I'm in the mood for right now. And it was just, it was really good at doing that. Exactly. And it's, what I'm really excited for is that's coming out in a movie starring the girl who played Rue in The Hunger Games, and I hear maybe Mandy Moore. So really great, awesome cast. I am so excited for that. So overall, my rating of The Darkest Minds is a 5 out of 5. Never Fade is also a 5 out of 5. But because of the annoying hero complex in this one, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. So overall, my whole rating is probably like a 4.75 out of 5. They were all really good. I loved the writing. But there was just some character changes that weren't the best in the last one. Alright everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!